The news was underwritten by Haverhill Bank, just one bank. Haverhill Bank delivers local banking with eight branches across the region, including Haverhill, Merrimack, and Salem, New Hampshire. Online at HaverhillBank.com. Wave weather! Here's the wave weather forecast for Haverhill and the Merrimack Valley. The National Weather Service has issued a winter storm warning from 8 a.m. Wednesday morning until 10 a.m. Thursday morning. Tonight, partly cloudy with a chance of isolated snow showers, low 26. North winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. On Tuesday, partly to mostly cloudy, high around 40, low 26. And the outlook for Wednesday, cloudy skies with snow, mixing with rain and pockets of freezing rain at night, high around 40, low 32. I'm WHAV meteorologist Jim Vaughn, your next wave weather in 30 minutes. Those Boston stations don't always understand weather in the Merrimack Valley. Stay informed with Wave Weather every 30 minutes, 24 hours a day on Soft Gold WHAV. Ninety-seven point nine FM WHAV. Catch the wave, WHAV. Merrimack Valley. Open mic. From the Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom, ninety-seven point nine WHAV FM presents the new open mic show with Bill Masek. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Good evening. How are you this evening? I hope you're doing fine. You know, as it gets lighter, you know, it's hard to say evening when when it's still light out. Of course, it's almost dark now. So, But at 4 o'clock, it's just too early to get dark and then you can say good evening at five o'clock and it feels okay but in the summer when it's light till like eight or later people don't think evening begins until it gets dark right what do you think about that give me a call 978-374-1900 my name is bill masick this is the new open mic program we're here every monday night from six until eight o'clock and it's uh, 607 right now and uh, i do have a guest coming in later During the show, um, our state senator, Barbara Letalian, who is running for the 3rd Essex District to run for Congress, um, will be joining me. And uh, I'm sure she'll have lots of good information, and I hope you have some great questions to call in. Because this should be a two-way program. I'd like to hear from listeners when they have a thought, when they have a question. Whatever's on your mind, give me a call, 978-374-1900. Now, you can find us at 97.9 FM, and we prefer you find us there because that's our primary radio channel. But if you can't find us there, it's okay if you go to whav.tv or if you go to our Facebook page. And uh, I also want to say that we are on many of the local cable access channels, too, so you can also uh, find us on your television. Any place is okay. And uh, because we're on Facebook and you can find us on the web at whav.tv, you can um, you can find us any place in the world. So there's really no excuse. Monday night, 6 to 8, this is where you should be. I hope you're listening, and I hope you do uh, join in to the program with a phone call about anything that's on your mind. It can be about, uh, you know, our Merrimack Valley. It can be about our country. It can be about the world, about the way things are going. We are open to all questions. It's just a conversation. That's all I'd like to have this program be about. Different things, different things in life that mean something to you. Um, One thing that probably means something to you is what you snack on when you go to work. And um, I have a report here that says... And, and take a guess. You know, what do you think is the, the best thing you can be snacking on at work? Well, you, you may be surprised, uh, but there has been a study done at UCLA, and the most important thing that you can snack on, or the best thing that you can snack on, is walnuts. Yes, believe it or not, wal- walnuts are the best thing you can eat because they're also good for your memory, for your concentration. And um, people who eat walnuts uh, are just more alert and work better. That's what the test results show. So um, if you can eat walnuts at work without getting in trouble, then 
uh, I would suggest you do that. 978-374-1900 is the number to call into. Uh, we'd like to hear from you this evening. Um, my, uh, my regular co-host, uh, Bill Ellis, is not making it into the show tonight, but um, if he's listening, I'd like to say hi, Bill. And also, uh, Sharon Chenard may be in later. She's... Um, She's a hard-working lady, and she, um, she uh, you know, may be in and join me before the hour is over. But I want you to join me. Give me a call, 374-1900. We can talk about anything. How about the weather? What do you think about, you know, February? Mother Nature was so nice to us in February that, um, you know, it seemed like we were almost getting into spring. Well, then comes March. Well, they do say March comes in if it comes in like a lion, it leaves like a lamb. So you can only hope that, and I hope that starts around the middle of March, <laughs> and we don't have to wait till the end. Because uh, uh, personally, I'm not looking for more nor'easters, especially with heavy, wet snow. And we might be getting something like that along the lines of Wednesday evening and Thursday. So um, you know, do do be ready for that because it's not spring yet, and the temperature's not going up into the 50s or anything crazy like the 60s like it did a few days in February. The temperature is going to be holding pretty steady around 40, give or take a little. So um, the weather is um, at least not working out the way I would like it. 611 right now. Give me a call, 978-374-1900. This is the open mic program. And um, what else is going on in your life? What else do you think is um, going to happen? I, I just did get word today that the... Um, the work that we've been expecting in Haverhill from the, the Bradford Bridge, the Como Bridge, as it's officially known as, um, right at Harbor Place, all the way up to and including Monument Square, is going to be uh, resurfaced and, and uh, the state contract is out and it will be done this year. And uh, also, all of the lighting is going to be redone. And when I say lighting, I don't mean street lights. I'm talking about the signalization, which uh, so many people complain about, because especially the one coming out of uh, Bailey Boulevard, it, it lets like one or two cars out, and then it turns yellow and quickly to, to um, red. It's just uh, not enough. But all those signals are going to be modernized, and they're going to be... Um, um, you know, made, uh, they're going to be replaced is what they're going to be. So they're going to, it's going to be real good before the end of this summer's construction season. Now, I'd also like to remind you that we have a birthday contest here. And since we're in the month of March, uh, it's time to look for April birthdays because at the end of March, we will be giving away a birthday cake to some lucky random winner. So if uh, we have a caller on the line, I believe my producer has given me the cue that we have a birthday caller on the line. Hello, caller. I am the birthday caller. You are the birthday caller. and Are you the birthday boy? No, sir. No, <laughs> okay. Uh, the birthday person is Cheryl. Cheryl. Cheryl, and she's in Methuen. Okay. And, um, Cheryl from Methuen, and um, yep. any other information, any other uh, embarrassing things you want to say about Cheryl, age, relationship, or anything I, like that? I can't think of. Well, she's younger than I am. So <laughs> not by much, but she's younger than I am. Okay, well. It makes her younger than you, too, Ben. That's very possible, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and by the, the way, that's the Basilier Bridge. The, oh, that's right. The Como Bridge is the new one down the other end. Yeah. What am I thinking? Thank you for correcting me on that. You're right. Um, well, um, okay, Cheryl's April birthday. What's the birthday? Uh, the 30th. The 30th of April. Okay. That's, it's also Tim's birthday, but... Tim Coco's birthday? <laughs> that's Tim's birthday? Yep. Yeah, well, he, he works here, so he's he's not... He's That's excluded. Great. Not eligible. Not eligible, right. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay, well, we got Cheryl into the hat. And, and um, uh, birthdays and anniversaries for the month of April. Birthday is... inch cake, your choice of chocolate or vanilla. <laughs> from Al LBD's, LBD's Bakery. Italian Bakery. You looking for a part-time job or are you, are you looking for my job? or, or <laughs> <laughs> good, Good work. Well, it, when you owned radio stations, I never even thought to uh, look at that. 
Yeah, well, you know, I, I've been uh, out of that game as an owner for uh, about two and a half years. Yeah. So um, here I am. Here you are. Here I am. So no I'm, I'm enjoying, go, I'm enjoying my uh, Monday nights here at WHAV. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Because radio gets in your blood, and it's good to have some ability to, uh, uh, you know, kind of play in radio. I, I, I always call it that. You know, when I first started for many years, I worked part-time. And I, and I would um, say that it was like my hobby, and instead of bowling, I would go to the radio station. So uh-huh. it worked out well. And then it became a, a lifelong career and a passion. So uh-huh. for many years. We, well, we, I used to um, be active at the uh, Northern Essex College radio station. Nice. WRAZ. Yeah, I remember that. AM yeah. and PM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, AM and PM. Those were the days. Those were the days, were yep. The yeah, it's a little different now, but we're still here. That's good, though. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for your call. And uh, I don't know if calls are backing up yet. But uh, I hope you get a lot of them. I, I'm trying to stimulate that. You know, the the um, we have a lot of listeners because people, a lot of people say to me, "Oh, I heard you Monday night. I heard you Monday night. I like this. I like you know." It, but they don't call in. I say you got to call in. People are shy. I guess. Well, they, some people are shy. Yeah, you know, they're afraid to call in. They don't want to be heard on the air sometimes. But, but everybody talks on the on the phone. Just that's right. Call me up. You know. Hey, you remember when uh, the open mic show was just a one way conversation? With, I barely remember that I, when I was a little kid. Yeah, I barely remember that. Who was the host? Uh, Ed Johnson. Ed Johnson. Okay, yeah. Well, I had, I know Ed Johnson. He was, Mr. Johnson was my speech teacher in high school. So you took public speaking. I did. That's right. So did I. Yeah. That was one of my favorite courses up there. Yeah, me too. He was a, a, an excellent person. You know, oh, yeah. he, he was just fantastic. But and that's why our uh, our studio here, the uh, newsroom, is named after him because Tim right. Tim is a historian, and knows a lot of information about WHAV from start to finish. That's right. Yeah. M- more than I could tell you. <laughs> he really knows his stuff. Hey, you know what? I got to take a break right now. Okay. And I uh, thank you for your call and call again anytime. Take care. Okay. Take care. Thanks a lot. All right, this is the uh, new open mic on WHAV 97.9 FM. Open mic! Bill Masek and the new open mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900. If you're enjoying this program, consider becoming a WHAV member right now. Just click on the membership tab at whav.net. Your membership enables WHAV to remain local and independent. Consider joining at WHAV.net. Catch the wave! Hi, it's Gary LaPierre. I worked for WHAV. It was brief. Long story. Tell you sometime. Anyway, become a WHAV member or renew your membership now. Just visit WHAV.net and click on the membership tab. Community Spotlight! Know a senior in need of a winter coat? Haverhill Council on Aging has announced that seniors 55 and older who are enrolled in Mass Health, SSI, food stamps, Social Security Disability, Veterans Aid, or Fuel Assistance are eligible to receive a free coat at Ruth's House, 111 Lafayette Square, as part of an ongoing coat program. Seniors should bring proof of eligibility to Ruth's House Tuesday through Friday between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Someone you know is on WHAV. To submit or read your own nonprofit announcements, click on the contact tab at whav.net or email news at whav.net. In the Edwin V. Johnson newsroom, this is Robin Fancher. Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom, 97.9 WHAV-FM presents the new Open Mic Show with Bill Masek. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. 
And we're back on the new open mic, Bill Masick here. It is a Monday night, 6.20 is the time, and we have another call about birthdays because we have our birthday giveaway from LBD's Bakery in Bradford Square. And uh, we're, we're starting a new list of names, people that are born were born in the month of April, or somebody that's born in there. If you get a newborn this uh, coming month of April, uh, you can call us. No, you can't call us late because you'll be a month ahead. Won't work. Okay, well, let's go to the call and see who is on the line. Hi, how are you? Oh, fine. Who Who are you calling? What's your name? Uh, my name's Barbara. Hi, Barbara. I'm calling for my son. He's turning 17 in April 16. Okay. His name is Philip. Philip, turning 17. And did you say it's April 16th? April 16th, okay. All right, well, we will um, get Philip's name into the hat. We'll be drawing at the end of March for a uh, cake from LBD's Bakery in Bradford, and hopefully oh, okay. uh, maybe you guys will win and enjoy a free cake. Great one, too. Yeah. Any, anybody else in the, in, uh, no, in the month no. of April? Okay. All right, any, any anniversaries in the month of April? No? All right. Well, when you think of something, just give us a call a month ahead. All right. right. Thanks for calling in. Thanks for listening. Anything else on your mind tonight you want to talk about? Uh, No, not really. No? You're all set? All right. You're looking forward to the uh, storm? Huh? And they're looking forward to the the big storm coming? Oh, no, not really. No, I don't. Me me neither. Okay. Thanks for calling in. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. That's how easy it is. See, you don't have to be shy. You know, she seemed a little bit shy, but that was okay. We got through that phone call. So if you have a birthday or an anniversary in the month of April, you can call in. We'll put your name and information into our big hat, and then we will draw something out on the last Monday of March. And uh, whoever we draw out will win a a free cake from LBD's Bakery in Bradford Square, here, right, right in Haverhill. So easy to find great Great baking stuff going on in there, not just cakes, all kinds of cookies and breads and all kinds of things. So do uh, whenever you're you're hungry for some great uh, bakery goods, give LBDs a chance. Just stop in and tell them we sent you, WHAV. It's uh, 622 right now, and um, we are here every Monday night, and I want to hear from you. This hour is a call-in hour. It's a uh, free-form hour. You can call in about anything that's on your mind. Um, you can talk about stuff that's kind of local, Merrimack Valley-ish, statewide, or something that is um, a little you know, more national, if you want to talk about that, or even international. I want to talk about something that uh, I experienced, and, and that is something that is uh, a, kind of an old, needs-updating relic that we have called the T, or the MBTA. And uh, I had an experience last Thursday night of uh, riding in on the tee, uh, going to a Bruins hockey game. And I'll tell you, that car was just so old, rusted, there were holes on the side of it. And um, it it just was not real, real pleasing. But I think it's time. And I think Governor Baker, uh, one article I read said that – he was going to be spending upwards to a billion dollars in buying 400 new T cars, and that he was going to uh, be making a commitment to uh, rebuilding what we call the T. And I hope he does it because it's time. Those cars are ancient; they don't uh, have any anything appealing about them, down to the dirty seats. And uh, just they've been used and abused for too many years. So time to update those. And if you've had the experience, uh, you know what I'm talking about. And it's not cheap either. As uh, Representative Andy Vargas said, it costs $21 round trip a day from Haverhill to Boston and back if you don't want to drive into Boston. Of course, parking will kill you and push you way above the $20. One dollars plus the cost of gas, so it is a little bit better deal in a sense that if you pay for parking in Boston. But you know what what you have to go through, the experience is not real pleasant. I have a phone call right now, and we're going to go to the call and see who's on the line and what that person wants to speak about. Hello, good evening. 
Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I think I'm good. Let me check. Yeah, I guess I am. All right. Where are you uh, checking? Uh, no, no. Don't. This is a family program. I'm don't. Tim Coco's uh, safety advisor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I'm calling you to let you know, if you go to the end of Laurel Avenue the, and you come to that little island down the bottom. The end of Lowell. Okay. That is so dangerous there. They should have a caution light there or something. The end of Lowell? Or the end yeah, of if you go all the way up Washington Street, come to the end, take a right, yeah. follow that all the way down. Okay, you're talking you know, just beyond the plaza, right Right before you would go to Not maybe... Not going towards the plaza, going the other way. Going, oh, take a right at the end of Washington, okay. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, all right. I know the little island you're talking about. That is a dangerous intersection down there. Yeah, that I remember when that was put in, and for whatever reason, the way it was designed, I, it was never real comfortable to to navigate, and right. and, and, and it almost that, seems as though it's like b between being rode over and plowed over. It's in rough shape. Yeah, that's a that's a um, that is a good comment on that. So I'll uh, I'll see what I can do on. Are for, you still there? I'm here. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just barely. Okay. Uh, Washington, Washington Street itself is an issue because when they fixed the sidewalk, they took up they took up two feet of the other side of the road, and the uh, the the line in the which is supposed to be in the middle is way off center right now. Okay. All right. If you're coming up the opposite way, going up Washington Street from Laurel Ave, it's it's wider, if, but if you're coming down the other way, it's narrower. Okay. So yeah. that, uh, to me, is going to be a danger for the cars to park over there. Yeah, okay. Uh, I've seen one time when the crossing guard almost got hit by a car there. All right, well, I will, um, I'll, I'll see what I can do about mentioning that, too. You know, also, the, 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 the line, that, you know why that happened? Because they narrow the roads today. The, the rule of thumb is to slow traffic by narrowing the roadway. And I'm not sure I agree with that, but uh, that's what's happening. That's the modern approach. No, yeah. To, well, uh, I agree with it in some ways, but it's also a dangerous issue. I mean, if kids walking, you know, in the sidewalk, over the sidewalk, which they still do. They don't use the sidewalk. I don't understand it, you know? Yeah, I, I agree with you. So, But, but that's um, why they do that. I want to mention, I want to thank the mayor. He sent me a birthday card. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and um, also, uh, uh, did, was there any discussion on Plugs Pond? Remember we talked about it last week? Yes, I do remember that. Um, I have had no discussion with anybody as of yet. But, well, uh, I sure hope that they can do something with it, because if you happen to go up there, I don't know if you do or not, that piece of wood out there in the, <laughs> laying over the back and looks terrible. Well, I, you know what? I don't go to Plugs Pond, in all honesty, but yeah. um, I, that doesn't mean that it 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 can't be uh, looked at and reviewed, so um, I would speak um, to somebody on that. But um, uh, yeah, I, also, I can't. Um, I also it's still about early in the yard season. In the schoolyards, uh, got to uh, draw money for the city to help pay for some of the schools or whatnot. Right, right. Uh, because these people that do have stuff for yard sales and flea markets, they don't have no place to bring it. Yeah, well, it would take somebody to. It would, I'd like to think that maybe a nonprofit would step up and yeah, uh, and, but I mean, and do don't something. You think that's a good idea. Yeah, I think it's a great idea because you know you're only allowed to get two yard sale permits a year for like in in your driveway or in front of your house, and you may not yeah. get rid of everything in two. To, uh, and then you have to get your own permit and everything. But I understand that. Yeah. But now I have one more issue before I leave you. Yeah, okay. And I want to thank you for listening to me. A anytime, you know uh, that. The uh, bicycle issue in the summertime is wicked bad. No lights, no reflectors, no nothing. People dressed in black clothes, it's crazy. You know, and they cut out in front of your skateboards and whatnot. When I was a kid, I had to have all that. Bikes lights, horn, everything, you name it, everything but a, a high-speed bicycle. 
Well, I, I remember that, but I don't think that there's any regulations, and there's well, no there's I nobody that's going to... They gotta do something with the kids that do do, do it, uh, fine them, buy dollars, whatever, and also maybe take their bicycles away, because they shouldn't be in the streets. It could cause an accident between some other car avoiding them and going on the wrong side of the road. I think you're right from a practical standpoint. I don't think it's going to work because I, I just don't think there's enough. There's not enough. Uh, the police aren't going to want to get involved with this. They're, they're no, already but, uh, too I busy. Think they come on. I know the police won't do it because they got other things they're, they're to do. They're too busy. I understand right. That. But they ought to come up with some sort of a solution to uh, avoid all of it. A lot but do of we it. have? You know what I mean? Do we I have mean, kids getting hit? I'm not aware that we have you know a lot of accidents with yeah. kids getting hit by cars. So I don't right. think I don't think well, we have a problem. That, you know, we're not, but I mean it, it's a very dangerous situation, especially at night. You know what I well, mean? Well, they're supposed to be wearing helmets. I think that that's a recommendation. And yeah, well, and then it comes down to the parent the or the parents. You know, where does the parent or the parents you know, take responsibility for their kid. Why is why is government always the one that has to step in and do parental work? I, I think it's time that some of these parents are told, you know, if anything more, make a recommendation, uh, you know, through the schools well, to I, the I parents. Send home, on, send on home on a note or something. But, but uh, I don't think you know, if they want a bicycle, which which better to keep your bike or lose your life? You well, I, I mean? don't think we have the right to take somebody's property either. There's, we don't have laws that say that you can't. Ride a bike without, you know, uh, fluorescent no, uh, gear I mean, on or something. I, I feel bad if you had to take some kid's bicycle away from them, but I also feel bad if they get killed, you know? I would too. I'm not looking yeah. to say that it shouldn't be safe, but I think you've got to make it as safe as possible. Okay. By Listen, I thank you very much for I thank you for your and call and, your, I hope that we take up some and all your ideas. And I just want to tell you something that, you know, these ideas are good. It doesn't mean that they're going to quickly happen, but. Oh, I no, understand no, that. You know, I, I think it's safe to say the wheels of government turn very slow, and that's oh, just I the way they go. I understand all of that fully. You, you know, it's, uh, time is an issue. Always, always. Time yeah. and resources. Okay. All and right. I want to thank the mayor again. Thank okay? you for calling in. You bet. I hope he's listening. I hope so, too. Bye now. Bye-bye. This is the new open mic at 632. We're going to pause for the cause, and we'll be right back with more of your calls. Give me a call, 978-374-1900. I'm Bill Masick, and this is the new open mic on WHAV at 97.9 FM. Open mic! Bill Masick and the new open mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900. If you're enjoying this program, consider becoming a WHAV member right now. Just click on the membership tab at WHAV.net. It's 633. WHAV is on Facebook. For quick access, visit WHAV.net and click on the Facebook icon. Catch the wave! Would it surprise you to know radio still reaches more than 90% of people in every age group every week? It's a fact. And 97.9 WHAV FM's target audience averages 92%. While other media are cutting back, area residents turn to WHAV for local news, information, and entertainment they cannot find elsewhere. Add what has been called the halo effect of public radio, and listeners find business messages more credible and trustworthy than other forms of advertising. For a no-obligation assessment about how WHAV can help your business reach more people than all other local media combined, call 978-374-1900 or visit whav.net. Wave weather! Here's the wave weather forecast for Haverhill and the Merrimack Valley. The National Weather Service has issued a winter storm warning from 8 a.m. Wednesday morning until 10 a.m. Thursday morning. Tonight, partly cloudy with a chance of isolated snow showers, low 26. North winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. On Tuesday, partly to mostly cloudy, high around 40, low 26. And the outlook for Wednesday, cloudy skies with snow, mixing with rain and pockets of freezing rain at night, high around 40, low 32. I'm WHAV meteorologist Jim Vaughn, your next wave weather in 30 minutes. WHAV Open Mic From the 
Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom, 97.9 WHAV-FM presents the new Open Mic Show with Bill Masek. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Okay, we are back on the open mic program. I'm Bill Masick. The phone number is 978-374-1900. If you want to give me a call, if you have a topic on your mind or something you're thinking about, something you like, something you don't like, something you uh, want to discuss, give me a call. We're open lines until uh, the 7 o'clock hour when um, our guest will be um, Massachusetts State Senator Barbara Latalian, and she's also a candidate for the 3rd Essex District for Congress. And um, we're going to have a lot to talk about. We'd like to hear from you at 978-374-1900, both questions for um, our state senator and also, you know, questions now. If you have anything you want to talk about, we have open lines. 978-374-1900. A big thanks goes out to uh, all of the local access channels that covers our program. And uh, we also want to say... that you can find us on Facebook or on whav.tv on top of 97.9 FM, which is our flagship station. We hope that we have a button on your radio because that's so important that uh, you, you give us a regular button on your radio or a digital button, whatever you might have in your car, because um, we don't want you to forget about us because there's so much good stuff going on here at WHAV. Uh, we do have a call. Let's see who's on the line. Hello, hello. Hello, this Bill? Yes, it is. Yeah, Dr. Boucher here. Hey, Dr. Boucher. How are you? <laughs> how you doing? Great. Yeah, Great. J- Jerry Boucher, you know I me. know Jerry. Yeah, uh, I know. I, I mean, I know you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you. Yeah, this, uh, they, they've been bringing up um, deplorable things in Haverhill about, I don't know who, they're coherent enough to comprehend what's going on. I'll bring up just one uh small example is uh, a crosswalk right in front of my house, which is I really appreciated because I live on a hill there right across a little mini mall. Yeah. But they made the crosswalk twice the width of a regular sidewalk. Now, this is on Hilldale Avenue? Yeah. Across from the, the, the Hilldale Plaza as you're the, going the up? The little Hilldale Pizza. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, right on the left as you just yeah. start up Hilldale. You know, it's nice to have a crosswalk in front of my house so Yeah. It pays attention to it, but they made it twice the width of uh, the sidewalk, which uh, eliminates street parking, and, and a lot of people are parking and blocking my driveway. Oh, jeez. Because there's no room. Well, why would they make a crosswalk for people to walk four breasts? Jeez, four Jerry, I, you know, that's a great understand. question. I, I have no idea. That's... I, uh, I don't understand that. So, um... But I've been uh, working, I'm working with the city now. Uh, should there be any, maybe a sign? So that, you know, maybe we could get a sign, you know, if you uh, might help out, that it said no parking, you know, here to uh, the curb. Or, or oh, no, they just have to make the uh, crosswalk smaller. But once it's in, you know, it's it's hard because they'll have to paint over it, and it looks like, you know, it's an old crosswalk painted over, and it's no, it, it has to wear off. That's what happens. And, and oh no, they can paint over. That's easy. Well, they paint. They paint. They. I've seen them paint black over them, and they, they still. Um, anyway, yeah, they could do that. So, <laughs> are you talking to uh, Mike Stankovich or, or, or um, anybody at DPW? I know. I, I've been dealing through the mayor with somebody in the oh. mayor's office. Well, that's I don't want to mention any names. No, you don't time. have to mention any names. No, but that's so Not you're this time you, because they're working on it so and. Uh, that's why it's easy to, to cover it up and just put a uh, n- more narrow sidewalk. I wonder if there are regulations, though, as to how wide a crosswalk should be. You know, there might be some state regulations. Well, that, that's what I was thinking, too. But why would a crosswalk be twice the size of a regular uh, Why would that be a regulation? I don't think the side. W- well, maybe for handicap reasons. You know, it might be so that... Uh, you know, somebody in a wheelchair with somebody else walking with them or have a, you know, a dog or something. The wheel, if somebody had a wheelchair that size, <laughs> it'd have to be... A, it'd be okay, the, so it's that it, wide. They, they could float it in a river. It's that wide, huh? Uh, it would be a double wide. Yeah, I don't understand it. Okay, well, I don't, I don't know, either. Who, who, uh, and I haven't really noticed it, although I'm sure I've driven over it, but... Um, 
I I understand your point. I understand your point, and uh, I would think that it's a good time to be discussing it with the mayor's office because once the crews are out there in the spring, <clears throat> they can they can put it on the checklist of something yeah, to to get to done. Just go out there and just cover it up and just put a small one there. Yeah, like, yeah. I could do that myself, but I'm blind. It might be crooked. Right. I I hope you don't try to do that. <laughs> don't, don't don't do that, Jerry. No. But, no. Don't you try to do it. But I'll do that now <clears> when there's not that much traffic. We'll try to get it done for you. <laughs> <laughs> I said that people will try to clean the catch bases. I said, uh, take me where the catch bases are, and I'll go out there. I said, no, I don't want to be responsible for you getting hit by a car. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea, too. That's, that's good thinking. Yeah. So what else is going on? Oh, just uh, since I got my uh, PhD, I've been very busy uh, more advocating. Uh, I want to congratulate you on, on your... Uh, keynote speaker at the American Council for the Blind yeah. this weekend. And, you know, there's a lot of things going on. But uh, it just keeps me more busy anyways. Well, I want to congratulate you because what you accomplished is something that uh, people without any handicaps, uh, you know, have a hard time finding the ability well, to do so my fellow, uh, good comrades, veterans who have a lot of psd problems i i told them i said what you have to do is take a negative attitude and put it into positive thinking it's right you know i and i heard that along something similar to that that would drive you crazy right i heard something similar to that decades ago i've always remembered it i was listening to a, a program and a gentleman said you know what's wrong with with people today is they don't think like the handicapped and I, that caught my ear, and then he continued to say, handicap, uh, no, he said regular people first. He said regular pe people without handicaps uh, think it could be so much better, but people with a handicap realize and say it could be so much worse. And, and that is, it was so striking to me and made so much sense, oh, is yeah, to think true. positive. It's yeah. all about thinking positive, realizing your life could be worse, no matter how bad it may get. It could always be worse. So keep a smile on your face and just keep pushing. And I think that gets you through tough times. Yep. You it know, has, one, it has worked for me. percent right, yep. attorney Bill. Yeah, right. <laughs> I am an attorney. You're right. I know, I know you are. I don't, uh, I don't. You're one of the smartest I, I don't, in Haverhill. Thank you. Thank you. I don't, I don't use this, this program to, uh, it, you know, advance my uh my career or my profession. So. Well, I know that, but, but I don't want to know. But that. you know, that's okay. You, you you're, you're right, and uh, thank you for saying that. And, and, you're uh, one of the, and you know, if, if, you're if you're watching on TV, if people... You're one of the best counselors on the... Well, thank you for saying that. If, you know, if you... Uh, if you happen to, if somebody happens to be watching, I'm probably red right now. It would probably embarrass me that I'm, I'm a little red-faced. But uh, thank you for the compliments, and I, I appreciate it very much. You know, I just I love doing this program. I wouldn't care. I know that. Anyways. I know. But I just love this program. I love talking with people. I love helping people out. So um, that's why uh, I'm here. You know, it's just right. a, a great, red face. great I'll opportunity. Red-faced. Black paint. <laughs> No, you got to use that on the crosswalk. Oh, that's right. You got to right. save that for the crosswalk. That's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, Bill. All right, Jerry. Thank you for calling in. Call in any time. Uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, 643 right now. This is the new open mic. I'm Bill Nasick, and uh, we're here every Monday night from 6 until 8. That should uh, be an appointment for you. We have another call at 978-374-1900. Let's see who's on the line. Hello. Good evening. Hi, Bill. This is Greg in Bradford. How you doing? Good, Greg. How are you? Good. I want to emphasize the MBTA, your jaunt on the MBTA. And I'm going back to ancient history because I was one of the people who uh, worked, I worked was one of the, on the volunteer committee to bring the Olympics to Boston. And that went, you know, that was with yeah. on. But one of the things that everybody emphasizes, you have a deadline and you have a goal in mind that you're going to get things done. Right. And one of the things that was going to get done was not a complete rebuild, but major improvements to the MBGA. The new cars, 
the Green Line extension that would have gone up to Tufts University. Right. You know, modernization of a lot of the uh, lines that needed upgrading. Yeah, yeah. And what happened when the, the opponents, our opponents said, oh, no, if we don't have the Olympics, public transportation is going to be so much better, so will the schools, and that we won't have any traffic or anything like that. It, it, it will be all so much better. We don't need this. Right. The minute the Olympics were canceled... <laughs> All of a sudden, some projects were postponed. Yeah. And the Green Line extension, well, like, whether that ever gets built or not is going to be a question. Right. For those unfamiliar with the T, those in Haverhill, the Green Line now runs from Leechmere, <laughs> underground, you know, Leechmere Station. It runs underground, and it splits three ways, Kenmore Square. Right. And uh, they were going to... The Green Line extension was going to run all the way up to Tufts University, Medford and Tufts University. Okay, yeah, which would have been nice. Uh, well, I guess it's still on the drawing board. Yeah. But Lord only knows what's going to happen with that. Well, but it, it, like you said, there are so many things that need to be done right. for replacement of cars and, and safety and, and things like that that those things probably should be in the second tier that we should get to and strive to keep on the drawing board. Yeah. But we can't forget, you know, to do the necessary. You know, it's my understanding that Keolis, who is yeah. an international transportation company, who I think had a seven-year contract with Boston, with the MBTA, uh-huh. the seven- or ten-year contract, I heard that they have already said that they are not going to bid for the renewal. Or, you know, to to go on yep. to the next contract because Boston is in such a, a sad shape that it needs well, so much that they are frustrated with it. Do you know what they're going to spend three quarters of a billion dollars for? What's on the table for the key? What? What would that and be? I'm not making. I am not making this up. They are going to spend three quarters of a billion dollars to improve the fare collection system. The fare collection system. Three quarters of a billion, huh? Yep. Well, they're going to have to up the fare to cover that cost. Boy. Uh, well, or make cuts in other areas. Or, or make, right, right. The objective is if you have a smartphone, toy phone, or something like that, you'll be able to tap your toy phone at the kiosk. And pay your fare. It. But that costs yes. three quarters and of a billion? Billion, yes. And then if people were wondering, well, is this to replace the Charlie card system? Oh, no, they can't do that. Because not everybody has a smartphone, especially people who rely on the MBTA for current uh, transportation, you know, for transportation. You know, a lot of these people pay cash or put cash on their Charlie cards and and go by, the, you know, travel by the week. I just can't. And, I'd have to be told why they just how they can justify that amount of money. It's a it's government so contract. Better. Oh, it's so much oh, better. Oh, it's so much better. But wh- where's yep. the real cost in investment in personnel and and maybe, I don't know how much equipment's involved, but, you know, what, writing the software for it is worth that kind of no, money? No, it's it's supposedly it's the contract's been awarded to some firm already. That's outrageous. It, it should be, be it should be rescinded. Just, you know, should that's be rescinded. probably ahead of the red line uh and this is what irritates me, because had the bid been active, I think you would see construction on the Green Line extension taking yeah. place right now, and the replacement of those cars would have been a priority. The replacement on the, I'm presuming you rode the Orange Line. I did. The replacement of the Orange Line cars would right. be a priority. Right, yeah. Uh, the line itself is fine. Uh, it's just the cars are the cars are ancient. Old. The cars are yeah. how old do you how did you how old do you think they are? I think they're around. Well, the Orange Line was rebuilt, I think, in the eighties, the early eighties. Yeah, so that's the. Uh, so that, they're that old. They're, they're that old. Thirty, almost forty years old. Yeah, almost yeah. forty years and, old. Uh, a lot of the Green Line cars have been replaced. You know, like right. rail, they have right. been replaced. The Blue Line has been pretty much rebuilt. The Red Line maybe doesn't need it as badly but the orange line is the place and also out to the seaport district a lot of people are not aware when they were crying about dig 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 you know about when we said the olympics and then they started squawking like parrots Ah, yeah yeah i hate to clue you in 
the big dig, dig has more than paid for itself. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people, if you understand macroeconomics, yeah, uh, in Keynesian economics, the entire 128 belt is now one of the hottest places in the country for business. Thanks yeah. to the big dig, you can get in and out of Boston. Right. Logan Airport is now, you know, has had its uh, freight and passenger traffic increased because of that. Right. And uh, there's an area in Boston, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, called the Seaport. I'm familiar with it. I don't know how many thousand people are employed there. I would guess. Oh, it's it's booming, just booming on that side. The entire city has built up now. I saw that they were actually, they're now considering using gondolas to bring people in and out of that area. That's kind of an absurd idea. Well, I know, but did you see that? (laughs) I saw it. Yeah, I kind of scoffed at it. (laughs) New York City, they use a gondola. There's an island where there's a mental hospital or something, and they use gondolas. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. But I think it's kind of absurd. They have to actually sit down and plan an effective rapid transit line to go out to the Seaport District, to loop the Seaport District. It has to be done if you're going to do transportation like that. These are the projects that need to be done to bring the city up and continue Massachusetts's growth. You're right. But some people were just saying, oh, no, no, well, well, the tea's gotten worse, and don't even talk about the continuing decay of Franklin Park. Right. Well, that, and we could also go on to talk about what's going on in Bradford that we've been promised for uh, probably three decades that they're going to do something with that layover and the running of the trains and kind of uh, spoiling the quality of life in that neighborhood. But we can't do that because I have to take a break. So okay. if, if I appreciate good. all your information and your call, and I do hope to hear from you on a regular basis. Thanks for calling in. Well, all right, Greg, thanks, thanks a lot. Okay. Uh, that's how easy it is. You know, there, there are people that uh, can just call in and they have information. I'm very appreciative of that. You can call me if there's anything you want to talk about. And uh, this is the open mic program, the new open mic. I'm Bill Masick at WHAV 97.9 FM. Open mic. Bill Masek and the new open mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900. If you're enjoying this program, consider becoming a WHAV member right now. Just click on the membership tab at whav.net. 97.9 WHAV. CBS Radio. Uh, One moment, please. CBS Radio. Uh, What's that, madam? Oh, I'm sure I don't know why Johnny Dollar prefers blondes. I'm a brunette myself. Yes, he's on the air this Sunday. I'll get it, Marge. You know, Marge, people really enjoy radio drama. I read somewhere once that it's because it gives their imaginations a chance to work. Not figures. CBS Radio. Our Sunday schedule. Oh, yes, madam. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. You're welcome. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is heard at 10 p.m. Sunday night as part of WHAV's nightly drama lineup. WHAV! Open mic! From the Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom, 97.9 WHAV-FM presents the new Open Mic Show with Bill Masek. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Back on the new open mic, Bill Masick right here, waiting for your call. We have open lines right now at 978-374-1900. If there's something you would like to discuss, comment on, or just kind of blab about, I'd like to hear from you. Yes, 978-374-1900 is the number to call. And uh, you can also find us at whav.tv. You can find us on Facebook and also on uh, the local access stations, including HC Media. You can uh, find us there. We want to thank all of the uh, people that are helping us get our program out to you. The new open mic program, heard only on Monday night from 6 until 8 p.m. Let's make a... Let's make a date for Monday nights at 6. And uh, do, if you can't take in the whole program, do 
Get involved whenever you can. We take phone calls. Our next hour, we're going to be invite. We have invited, and she's coming in. Her name is Barbara Latalian. She's a state senator. She uh, was started as a state representative, and we'll find out a little bit more about Barbara. Maybe she was also even a local official. I'm not sure of that, but she's now our state senator, and most importantly, she is on the ballot this coming year uh, for the congressional race to replace Nikki Songus as our. Uh, Congresswoman, uh, Barbara would like to be the next one up, and uh, she's got her hat in the ring, and she is certainly one to be considered uh, for the upcoming election. I mean, you can learn more about her during the 7 o'clock hour, so do listen right here at uh, 97.9 FM to the new open mic program to learn more and to even ask a question or, or uh, make a comment. Um, about what you think should be going on in Washington because uh, Barbara may be our next congressperson going to Washington to represent the 3rd Essex District, as it's called. Um, We have 435 people in Congress. We have 100 people as senators, and uh, we... uh, um, you know, have input, and we can discuss with these people, and they are available. So don't don't be intimidated. Give me a call uh, anytime when Barbara is on, or even before. Right now, we do have a call uh, regarding a birthday because we are always running our birthday contest, which is also a uh, anniversary contest. So it's like a birth anniversary contest, as some people call it. Let's see who's on the line. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Good. How you doing? Good. Good. All right. What's your first name? Liz. Liz, what are you calling about? I have five birthdays. Five birthdays? Yeah. You, you must have a big family or a lot of friends or both. Okay. All right. Let's start listing them off. Who's the first one? Uh, one's Ruthie, Mike, uh, Jean, John, and Jen- uh, Jennifer. Ruthie, Mike, Jean, John, and Jennifer. And yeah. they all have birthdays in April. Yep, 28, 29, 15, and 10. Okay. All right. Now, um, are they all relatives? Yeah, they're friends, yeah. They're all friends? uh, Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for calling in. Okay, bye. All right. Bye-bye. Yep. I'll be... LBD's Bakery is where uh, the birthday giveaway cake comes from. They are a fantastic bakery located right in the center of Bradford Square, and you should check it out if you haven't already. I'm sure you'll become a repeat customer. Uh, That's uh, where the birthday cake is is, um, going to be picked up. Every month we give away a cake from LBD's, and they are nice enough to uh, uh, donate that cake for the cause. Because WHAV is a nonprofit organization, um, WHAV is licensed by the FCC and depends upon uh, people making uh, donations, uh, buying sponsorships, but also becoming members. If you go on our website, you can find out about becoming a member uh, of uh, WHAV's um, nonprofit organization. And it's really worth doing because the station itself is something that was missing for quite some time. And I have to give a big round of applause to Tim Coco for working very hard to reestablish a local radio station for Haverhill and the vicinity. And uh, you just uh, you, you can't do without it. There's more local news and information provided and generated here in Haverhill than any place else. And it's, Tim, you know, they make sure that extras are given out, that information as it happens is given out. So you can't beat this station. I I hope that you enjoy it. I hope that you tell your friends and relatives about it. Get more listeners, get more activity, get more people to call in on our program because it's so important. Because if it goes away, it's probably never coming back. But it all depends on being able to kind of pay the freight in any business, which even a, a nonprofit organization needs money to make it work. It's 6.59 right now, and we're going to be taking a pause at uh, 7 o'clock for news and information. And then we'll be coming back for our second hour. And as I mentioned, Barbara Latalian will be here, State Senator Barbara Latalian, and she's running for Congress. So we'll have more information on that. 
Um, we are at 978-374-1900. You should note that number down. And I really want you to call in and converse because this is a two-way talk program. That's why I started doing it because I want to hear from you. I don't want you to just hear from me. I also want to hear from you. So please, when you uh, have a thought, or just join the conversation. It's as easy as talking on the telephone, and that's what we do all the time. So give me a call, and uh, once you do it once, you'll be a regular caller. As I said, 7 o'clock is a break time, and we're just about there. So we're going to take a pause right now on the new open mic program. My name is Bill Masick. And we are on WHAV 97.9 FM. Open Mic! Bill Masek and the new Open Mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900. If you're enjoying this program, consider becoming a WHAV member right now. Just click on the membership tab at WHAV.net. It's 7 o'clock. WHAV LP Haverhill. Here's what's happening in local news. When 97.9 WHAV-FM broadcasts the Haverhill City Council meeting live Tuesday night, listeners can expect high-fidelity sound. WHAV recently installed state-of-the-art audio transmission equipment in the Ted Pelosi Jr. City Council Chambers in City Hall. Efforts to secure permission to restore WHAV's live broadcast from City Hall were spearheaded by William Gould, chairman of the city's Cable Television Advisory Committee. Broadcasts of long-form community interest programs such as the City Council and School Committee meetings are exactly the things a community-based radio station such as WHAV is designed to do, said Gould, a former WHAV station manager. I'm glad we were able to put this together and hope WHAV can expand on these programs in the future. While the original WHAV AM installed broadcasting equipment in City Hall in 1973, it was based on the technology of the day, equalized phone lines between the building and the studios. Today's equipment uses advanced audio over IP technology. During Tuesday's meeting, city councilors are expected to discuss public graffiti, the body's own rules, including public participation, which has been a source of tension between councilors, parking signs and enforcement near Harbor Place on Merrimack Street as well. Northern Essex was defeated Saturday afternoon with a 79-64 defeat at the hands of Bristol Community College in the Region 21 Regional Semifinals. The Knights conclude the season with an overall record of 17-13. Alexis Estrella led the Knights offensively as he poured in a game-high 20 points. Gooney Kilicholu and Tom Jacobs also produced double-digit points for Northern Essex with 13 and 12 points respectively. Emir Alagaz dished out 12 assists in the losing effort to go with his 7 points. DJ Greenhall grabbed 11 rebounds to lead the Knights' efforts on the boards. After scoring the team's first 6 points of the game, Kyle Martin was held in 9 points for the contest. Northern Essex Community College competes as a member of the National Junior College Athletic Association and sponsors 8 varsity intercollegiate sports, including baseball, men's basketball, softball, women's volleyball, men's and women's Women's cross country and men's and women's track and field. Essex County Sheriff Kevin Coppinger is in Haverhill tonight for a talk on prison and judicial reform and opioid addiction. The free talk, sponsored by the Haverhill Democratic City Committee, takes place at 6 p.m. in the Haverhill Public Library's Johnson Auditorium. Coppinger is being joined by guest speaker Governor's Counselor Eileen Duff. Methuen police are seeking the public's help in solving two business break-ins that took place Friday morning. According to police, two men drove up to Burger King, 248 Haverhill Street, about 4.15 a.m. in a gray Honda CRV. One of the men is seen in surveillance video forcing the drive-up window open and entering the business. He's seen rummaging through an office, attempting to open a safe with a crowbar, and checking various cash registers. A second man is seen at the drive through window. Police believe these men are the same as those involved in a break-in at Merrimack Car Wash, which occurred immediately thereafter. Those with any information are asked to call the Methuen Police at 978-983-8698. 
Remember, WHAV is the only Haverhill-based news source. There's always more at WHAV.net. From the Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom, I'm Eric Scott. From Feature Story News in Washington, I'm Rebecca Foster. U.S. President Donald Trump and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu have been meeting at the White House and discussing the U.S. Embassy in Israel. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has hosted senior South Korean representatives following a warming of relations during the Seoul Olympics. And an aid convoy has reached the Syrian enclave of eastern Ghouta after being bombarded by government forces for two weeks. Wave weather! Here's the wave weather forecast for Haverhill and the Merrimack Valley. The National Weather Service has issued a winter storm warning from 8 a.m. Wednesday morning until 10 a.m. Thursday morning. Tonight, partly cloudy with a chance of isolated snow showers, low 26. North winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. On Tuesday, partly to mostly cloudy, high around 40, low 26. And the outlook for Wednesday, cloudy skies with snow, mixing with rain and pockets of freezing rain at night, high around 40, low 32. I'm WHAV meteorologist Jim Vaughn, your next wave weather in 30 minutes. Broadcasting on the Armstrong FM system, this is 97.9 FM WHAV. Broadcasting on the Armstrong FM system, this is 97.9 WHAV. Catch the wave, WHAV. Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom, 97.9 WHAV-FM presents the new Open Mic Show with Bill Masek. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. And we are back in the 7 o'clock hour at 7.07. And uh, with me is... um, Barbara Latalian, and she is a state senator right now from Massachusetts in your yes. district. And you are um, looking to maybe get a seat in Washington. Yeah, we'll see if I'm successful. Nick- I'll replace Nikki Songz. Yes. Yeah. yeah, pull right into that microphone. Okay. We want to make sure everybody How's hears that? every word you Hopefully have to say. Hopefully they can hear me. Great. Yeah, yeah. Very and, good. And um, 978 is our number. And uh, if anybody has a question or a comment on knowing you or who you are. We Mm -hmm. would like to hear from them. And uh, maybe as we continue our discussion, maybe they'll have uh, some added comment to something that we're going to hit upon, right? Sure. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. So Very good. um, I I was on the city council here in Haverhill when you represented a section of Bradford. Yes. So I served from 2003 through 2010. Uh, and had, yes, a good section of Bradford and uh, up off up past what I will still call Regan Ford, I guess. Right, uh, right. On 97, I had that section of town, uh, uh, Ward 5, Precinct 2, that was uh, where West Meadow Hill is and where the Congregational right. Church is yeah. and that area as well, where, where actually I lived for seven years. I lived up at West Meadow Hill. I didn't from know 90 se- Yep, yeah. from uh, 87 to uh, 1994. Aha. Yeah, I went to St. George Parish before it closed yeah. and was consolidated into All Saints. Yeah. Sang there, uh, I think, every year that we lived here in Haverhill in the church choir. Wow. Yeah. See, I find something out just uh, yeah. right at the beginning. Father here, Jim Broderick yeah. was our pastor, and but I want to say that four kids baptized there. I yeah. was on the city council eighty four to ninety two, and that's during that time that you were our state representative. But you have since moved up, and now you're a state senator. Now I'm in the state senate. Um, I yes, I my district is wholly different than it was in right. the house, with the exception of uh, three precincts in Andover. So I have the entire community of Andover. I have the city of Lawrence, uh, Draken, and Tewksbury. So I actually span Essex and Middlesex County right now. Okay, that's a pretty interesting little district. It really is. Yeah. It was one of the few that was not changed in the last redistricting. It stayed uh, exactly the same. Some others, as we know, the Haverhill boundaries were changed. Right. Right. Quite a bit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so my old seat was changed quite a bit. I would say that 
Most of it is now in uh, Linda Campbell has, but I think Diana might have a piece of Bradford. A piece of your old seat. Yes. Yeah, they do. Yeah. yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. But but I can, you know, one thing I would like to maybe get some old thought on, and mm-hmm. we have that same problem with the layover station at the Bradford stop mm. that we had way back when. And we get promises just like you got for right. us. Right. But the state just won't won't pony up and deliver. So I, the interesting so thing is that I was in contact with Linda Campbell, uh, Linda Dean Campbell, yeah. yesterday, and she said that she was heading off to meet with her families in the at, you know the Bradford train station issue. And I said to say hello to them because I remember them very well. Bert Lassert being right. one of those folks leading the charge in Bradford. And he uh, still is. That train station came up overnight. There was no public forum no sort of uh, people had no say so they just landed there idled the trains and of course when it's cold out is the worst right, right. because then they're idling uh, overnight right. and uh, or they're hearing them sort of decompressing right as as they uh, whatever it is they do to release the pressure on the valves uh, but that era is very much like a bowl and so that that volume from those train engines just carries Correct. right up into yes. that neighborhood. Yeah. And so at the time that I worked on it with Bert and with others in the neighborhood, Steve Bedore was the state senator. Yep. And what we were proposing, we both represented North Andover and Haverhill, and we were proposing that a idling station happened behind the Lucent building yes, because there was not that. folks living there. There was plenty of space there and they could do what they needed to do without directly impacting a butter's, you know, homes. So that was what we thought we could work on. We tried to get a stop there at the time. Lucent was looking to transform and add, uh, you know, make some changes to the building. Um, but they wanted to stop and we thought a fine trade off would be to have a, uh, the idling trains go there. The other thought was to have them go all the way up uh, to Plasto, right? right? As a as a trade off to allow for Plasto to add on to the to the route that they would have to idle up in Plasto, and yep. I and that's sort of where my working memory ends on this issue. Right. But clearly, it hasn't but those been resolved. Were options that were discussed and yes. somewhat. We thought in the pipeline, and they died if they ever got in the pipeline. Right. Yeah. I think what Steve and I did was we tried to get money into a uh, transportation bond bill, hoping that we could use the money to start a new stop, as I said, in North Andover at the Lucent Station. But I heard that some of the North Andover people, oh so distant, far away, Mm -hmm. were the ones that actually kind of swamped the deal. Right, and right. And that's unfortunate because uh, we live in an age where nobody wants anything near them, right? But in right. this instance, people weren't living in close proximity right. to where and they would have been idling. And if you were going to build barns, you wouldn't you – know, That's right. Gonna you were going to have sound barns. Right. That's right. Yeah. You know, that, that dampen the sound. It wouldn't go anyplace. So. Right. And I'm hoping that that can still be worked out. You know, I, um, I re- had – seen that Governor Baker was looking to spend a billion dollars to upgrade the T. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping that maybe just a little slice can come out to, can come out to, the to maybe fix that problem. Right. That, so uh, back in the day when I dealt with this, it was CSX that was the um, contractor that covered the rail up here. Right. And now, of course, it's Keolis. Right. So it's a different a different carrier. Um, but yeah, I'm very familiar with the issue. And I, you know, honestly, I think that's an advantage for me, having represented Haverhill, having lived in Haverhill. I don't need a map or a GPS to get around Haverhill. Right. I know, I remember when we walked the uh, the Speaker of the House through downtown Haverhill to talk about the transit-oriented development stuff that's happened since then. Yep. I remember walking him through the Hunking School when Jim Scully first came on as uh, superintendent, the old, sc- the old uh, Hunking, in a pitch to try to get school building to come in and, and make a commitment to build a new school. I remember helping to put money in for the Bradford Rail Trail. I, I met with the mayor this morning, so I've been corrected. It's now the Mayor Fiorentini or the Jim Fiorentini yes. Rail Trail. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, the great thing about if, if I am successful in, in getting into Congress is that I know Haverhill. I know I've lived here. I've worshipped here. I, I know every part of the city. Uh, I know what the, you know, what things have been hard fought and won, and I know which things still need to be fought for. And obviously, uh, you know, 
know many of the town fathers here. Yeah. Um, and so I think it would put me at a distinct advantage because I have I know I know Haverhill. You know the playing ground. I do. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you do. And you and you always did a great job. You were responsive, Thank you. and I know you always worked hard Thank to you. Uh, deliver. Thank you and very I, much. I would uh, expect the same if you go to Washington. And, yes, and I just, think just a different set that, of funding sources, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But you know, in, in, and I'll say that there's one counselor on the city council that uh, is constantly saying we should send out letters to our uh, Del- Washington delegation to um, help us with some of the mandates, the unfunded mandates, in a sense, mm-hmm. for combined sewer overflow, which is going to be anywhere from 50 to $100 million. And, right. And, and I know we're not the only community going up the river, but mm-hmm. it, it seems as though there's they there are unfunded demands or mandates, mm-hmm. but that nobody in Washington wants to even give us a loan. Right. You know, so I'd like to at least suggest right. that yeah, if you're so successful this, in your bid, that you right. think about, you know, some of the ways that you can uh, creatively help the communities. Maybe, you know, we're willing to pay, mm-hmm. but we have to figure out a way how to pay. I had this very discussion this morning with the mayor. Uh, when the Clean Water Act was passed at the federal level, obviously they upped the demand in terms of where we should be managing our stormwater, our wastewater. And as you know, it came to a head a couple of times, right? We had a similar nor'easter to what we just experienced this weekend in October. And because of the deluge of water, a lot of runoff, and we have uh, in a lot of communities along the Merrimack River, um, no capacity for for stormwater. And so it, it f- mixes in and floods in with our wastewater, goes into the uh, goes into the Merrimack River. And so at that point, um, you know, this became a discussion point. It made the front page of the Tribune. Uh, We need to up what federal grants uh, are available uh, to assist our communities to come into the 21st century in terms of their water and sewer. Um, it, you do feel it acutely if you're on the Merrimack River, if you're taking from that for drinking water, which some of the communities do. Uh, we need to, and I know Jim was saying, Jim Ferrantini, that you know, in some limited circumstances you can get a, a low interest loan, but we need to expand that because you know, clean water uh, a strong ecology um, are just things that we are demanding, uh, we want from uh, for our lives. The government has mandated, as you said, but without the requisite funds to help pay for that. So that's clearly an area where there's a lot of work that needs to be right. done. Well, it's, it's great to hear you say that. I would expect nothing less from you, uh, yeah. Barbara. And, uh, Thank you. <laughs> I, I know you'll be there for us. And I hear so. from, I, I don't know if you've ever interviewed him, but he's a fascinating guy. There's a guy named Rocky Morrison. Oh, I actually and, was uh, on the first time he had his boat okay. down in Haverhill. I was, yeah. on that, I was on that boat, and I was going down the river looking at all the... Pulling cars and junk the tr- out of the, the water. All the tires and all yeah. the stuff that that really needed to be removed. And he's done a lot of it, but he it's a continuing pro- it process. Is, and, and, right. um, and when we have those discharges, those overflows of water, often what ends up happening as well is needles that are in the, right. that are in the silt get unearthed and get yep. you know taken downstream. And so guess where those come to? Yeah. They come to Haverhill. They come to They Haverhill. come to Newburyport. They yep. come to Amesbury. Cool. So it's a, it's a big issue. Um, I think they float though, so he can catch them with some of those. Well, I forget what they're like called. Like a boon, almost. Yeah, boon, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, that's all important stuff to do. As a matter of fact, I will give credit to Colin LePage, mm-hmm. who has set up. He's tapped each one of us, all nine of us. We're all giving hundred and eleven dollars to help fund nice. what Rocky can do for Haverhill. That's where we're starting, and we're hoping that maybe we can get him in the budget for uh, a little bit more. Very uh, good to help us keep the, the river clean and maintained. Yeah, he yeah. was just at the, uh, De Burroughs hosted the Merrimack Valley Chamber of Commerce Senate luncheon where uh, four senators had a chance to speak and Rocky was there talking about the need for federal money to help assist with cleanup of the river. And I, I agree there that needs to be done. I, I've been out on his uh, boat when they've been actively pulling uh, or observing while they've been pulling um, cars out of the segment of the Merrimack River that's in Lawrence. Yeah. Uh, It's amazing. And then you go to his spot in Methuen along the river and you see all the junk that he's pulled out over the years. It's just incredible. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, we're going to take a little break, and uh, we'll be back. And I think Emma has arrived. She has. Yes. Hi, what? Emma. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is the new Open Mic. I'm Bill Masick, and uh, we'll be right back right here on WHAV 97.9 FM. Open Mic! Bill Masick and the new Open Mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900. If you're enjoying this program, consider becoming a WHAV member right now. Just click on the membership tab at whav.net. Broadcasting on the Armstrong FM system, this is 97.9 WHAV. Catch the wave! On air or online, 97.9 WHAV serves you. Twice an hour weekdays, keep up to date with exclusive local news and weather. Find out about civic events on Community Spotlight every quarter hour. And better prepare with wave weather every 30 minutes. Mass Moments, Melinda's Garden Moment, Sound Beat, and Insight Daily complete the spectrum. Hear classic comedy and drama seven nights a week at 10 p.m. and 1 a.m. Finally, a unique blend of rock and roll hits from the 60s, 70s, and 80s round out the entertainment. Stay with 97.9 WHAV, the only Haverhill-based news source. Community Spotlight! The Greater Haverhill Chamber of Commerce is gearing up for its high school interviewing competition and seeks community members to serve as mock interviewers starting March 7th. Students from Haverhill High, Timberlane Regional, and Sanborn High will compete in three rounds of interviews, eventually narrowing the field to five finalists. Interviewers will be provided materials, questions, a grading scale, and of course, coffee. Interested volunteers can email Beverly Donovan at beverly at haverhillchamber.com. Someone you know is on WHAV. To submit or read your own nonprofit announcements, click on the contact tab at whav.net or email news at whav.net. In the Edwin V. Johnson newsroom, this is Robin Fancher. Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom, 97.9 WHAV-FM presents the new Open Mic Show with Bill Masek. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Okay. All right. We are back here on the new Open Mic. I'm Bill Masick, and my guest is a state senator right now, Barbara Italian, Thank hoping you. to be a third uh, Essex District Congresswoman right. going, going to Washington, right? Yeah. You, you've got your hat in the ring. I do. Yeah. It's, you know, there are, I believe, 13 people in this race. Is it 13? I thought it was 12 and went to 11. It's, a, it's oh, no, oh, you're counting the Republican, going, too? Uh, no, 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 no. It keeps going the up. The Democrat? Yeah. Really? There were 14, and then one dropped, and then I went to a forum in Hudson, Mass., and somebody showed up and said, oh, I'm going to be a candidate as a Democrat, <laughs> too. So we're at, we're at 13, which is great for me because— with that many people in the field, I'm really the only one that's been an elected official for any amount of time. I have a great base. That's great. Yeah, yeah. so it's it's really advantageous for me. Nice. Yeah. Good. So it's uh, it's it's yeah that'll it'll splinter the uh, the, the voting public. Yeah. Right. People have lots to choose from. You know, I'm hoping people choose experience and wisdom and you know getting things done because yeah. I've got all of that. That's so, right. That's yeah. good. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a great approach, and you're doing all the necessary contacts and getting out there. And um, every race is kind of a new race, is my experience. It sure is. Yeah. And the electorate can have strong feelings on something that you never would have imagined a year before. So you always have to be tuned in to know what people care about and what's the most important thing in the race. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you, I think it's a good time. Because of all that's gone on, I want to choose my words carefully here, but um, I think that female candidates are on the rise. Mm -hmm. I think that people are looking for representation from women. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And I think that um, that will also be an advantage that you can play on. Right. What do you think? Yeah, well, I was cautioned by your mayor this morning that uh, everyone has the right to run and that I shouldn't say that women make better candidates, so I won't say that. Well, I didn't say you make no, a better no, no. candidate, but you make a different kind of exactly. candidate. Exactly, yeah. They, it may be that there's a different approach, a, a different viewpoint. Right. That's right. Uh, generally speaking, I feel as though women are very good at collaboration and sitting down and very focused on solving problems, right? right? Um, and so, you know, really willing to kind of check the egos at the door and sit down, roll up your sleeves, and figure out a way to, you I know, a way to solve. I that to put you on the spot or anything. Yeah, no, or, no, no. Or even, no, well, what, what your mayor I, said was that, you know, it should be the most qualified candidate, which I'm good with, too, because well, I your truly believe too, I'm right? the most qualified <laughs> candidate. <laughs> That'd be me. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. that's yeah. great, great. Yeah. So do you have any... Um, any things that after you uh, win that seat that you're going to look to do for the district? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think job one is to get down to Washington um, and to make sure that, you know, there's obviously a process of, of getting assigned to committees and getting your office and all of that. Uh, but I think the first job really is making sure there's no lapse in constituent services. Uh, having been a legislator for 15, you know, close to 15 years, I know how critically important it is to make sure that when people call, you answer the phone, when they're having an issue, in this case with the federal government, some, some problem, that you get back to them right away, that right. you connect with them, that you work with them. So the constituent services piece, I think, is critical. I think Nikki's done a fine job of she that has. in our yeah. district. And I think people would only notice if there were a drop off. So job number one is to make sure that constituent services are strong and robust and don't drop off. Um, and then number two, of course, is to make sure that you have done a sufficient amount of checking in with each of those 37 cities and towns to know uh, what their biggest challenges are, their highest priorities are, uh, because shortly after you're sworn in, you need to file your legislation. And so understanding what each community needs. And I would say that, generally speaking, there are a number of gateway cities, Haverhill yeah. being one, we are. Methuen, yeah. Lawrence. Uh, Gardner, Fitchburg, Fitchburg Marlboro. Yeah. So there are, uh, you know, Lowell. Yeah. Uh, there are a fair amount of gateway cities that ha will have similar needs in terms of federal funding, grant funding, uh, you know, community development block grants, uh, but will also have unique things that they need assistance with. And then there are suburban communities. Uh, there are quite a few suburban communities in this district. And then there are some rural communities, which I don't think people realize, right? Here in Haverhill, it's hard to believe, but uh, as you go out, along the Route 2 corridor uh, north of Gardner and Fitchburg, you get into very rural areas, uh, you know, that, right. that share the New Hampshire border. Um, I have a rural community right now in Drakeit, and so some of those are farming communities. Some of those have uh, very different and distinct challenges than a city would have. Right, right. Yeah. In Haverhill, being almost 36 square miles, we have rural areas I agree. that people can't even believe they're still in Haverhill. But, right. And, they're, and they, they embrace the the old names such as Ayers Village and right. Rocks Village. Yeah. And Riversiders want to be from Riverside. Right. Bradford people want to be from Bradford. That's what they say. Yeah. And, and they, they, they hold those areas. And I know that they're endeared because a lot of people don't want to leave those areas when mm -hmm. they're looking to maybe either upgrade their home or something or just change you know what's going on. They try to stay in right. those areas. And, and I think that's great. You yeah. know, I think it's great. So and I'm also I, very happy that the Haverhill City Council, or f whoever decided when they put the uh, charter together, to have all nine councilors at large, mm -hmm. I think is fantastic. Because all nine of us represent the whole city. We're right. not playing by district, mm -hmm. which I think creates another uh, problem, which I won't get into on your time. But, mm -hmm. but uh I, yeah. I, it's great that we, we run to all areas of, mm -hmm. of the city and not just, hey, you know what, that's another person's, and I'm not worried Turf, about that right, section right. of exactly. the city. We're, we're worried about every section, yeah. and we have to prove ourselves every two years to the whole city right. and not just a district. Mm -hmm. right? I like that. But. Yeah, so... Uh, but the nation's too big, so you have to have district uh, people going to Congress. Right, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> but so 37 cities? 37 cities That's and towns. That's a, yeah. a lot of turf. I agree with you that, that Haverhill is a unique city in that it has its downtown core. Uh, but, you know, I lived out 
on broad off of Broadway, right. headed towards Ayers Village, and right. on the on the downside slope of where I lived at West Meadow Hill, there were horse farms there. Right. There is a vineyard there right. uh, off of Lowell Ave right. and out near Rocks Village, of course, you're right. It, it's also right. we get farms, very, we get very lakes, countrified. We've got like yeah. seven golf courses. Yeah. You know, so. yeah, it's a unique city in that it has a it's a very large area uh, and it does have a yeah. real mix. I Compared agree. to Lawrence, which is six square miles, we're yes. almost six times as large. Right. And they can't have the things we have because they don't have the land mass. That's correct. Correct. So, you know, yeah. wave, wave the flag a little bit for Haver. And that's why <laughs> it's so important in my mind, though, to go out and, and learn all the cities and towns, learn what makes them unique, learn what their needs are. Um, to me, that's a huge part of the job of Congress, um, you know, in, in terms of... Uh, you know, big picture issues. I care deeply and have fought forever for education. Uh, there were a couple of years between my House and Senate stints. I served on the Andover School Committee. I, you know, I get special education having uh, my son with autism and working to fund special education uh, and working to strengthen that. Um, so certainly education is an area that I would want to go down and hopefully be on a committee that serves education. That's great. Yeah. And the funding. And, and hey, I, I know that we spend a tremendous amount for funding for special needs. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I just think that there should be a better way to divvy that up statewide, mm -hmm. that communities that don't have those uh, costs, mm -hmm. uh, such as the more affluent communities, smaller school districts, and, and et cetera, that, that they're not sharing an equal part of the of the load, in a sense. And mm -hmm. I you know, I'm, you know, I'm not sure yeah, how that well, could be addressed. It's not an easy question. We talked about mandates earlier, and I would say that when the federal special education law, which is called IDEA, was passed, uh, you know, I think people passed it thinking that there would be a more robust federal funding. I think they only fund somewhere on the uh, somewhere in the twenty to thirty percent range, and so it's always been a challenge. Uh, you know, as a state rep from Haverhill, I would always look to the federal delegation to try to see what they could do to help in the way of more federal monies back. Um, the state funding pieces that we do over and above Chapter 70 uh, funding formula for education include the special ed circuit breaker. So I started a special ed caucus to try to find ways to create bring more monies into every community nice. uh, for special ed yeah. funding because that's an area where everyone could agree we might diverge on methodology we might diverge on a bunch of other things but you know teachers school committee members superintendents city councils town you know boards of selectmen uh, all agreed that we needed more funding. Excellent. And so my hope is to go down to Washington and really try to be a voice on behalf of more education funding in general, but also really helping with sort of that special education mandate, bringing more money back to the, the you know, the district. Because I will be honest with you, I feel like every community really struggles with special education funding. Yeah, every single right. one. I think you're yeah. right. We've got to take another break. Okay. But, but we'll come back and do some more of this conversation and invite people to call in at 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. It's the new open mic on WHAV 97.9 FM. Open mic! Bill Masek and the new open mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900. If you're enjoying this program, consider becoming a WHAV member right now. Just click on the membership tab at WHAV.net. It's 7.33. Broadcasting on the Armstrong FM system, this is 97.9 WHAV. Catch the wave! Melinda's Garden Moments help gardeners create and maintain a healthy, beautiful garden with ease, inside or out, and all year long. This is Melinda Myers, inviting you to tune in every weekday morning, right here on WHAV. You'll learn creative ways to grow your own vegetables and herbs while beautifying your landscape. Eco-friendly lawn care, flower garden design basics, unique container gardens, attracting birds and butterflies to the landscape, and much more. Again, please join me weekday mornings for Melinda's Garden Moment for a very environmentally friendly approach to gardening. Remember, only local radio can bring you this feature opportunity, but only WHAV does. Wave weather! 
Here's the wave weather forecast for Haverhill and the Merrimack Valley. The National Weather Service has issued a winter storm warning from 8 a.m. Wednesday morning until 10 a.m. Thursday morning. Tonight, partly cloudy with a chance of isolated snow showers, low 26. North winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. On Tuesday, partly to mostly cloudy, high around 40, low 26. And the outlook for Wednesday, cloudy skies with snow, mixing with rain and pockets of freezing rain at night, high around 40, low 32. I'm WHAV meteorologist Jim Vaughn, your next wave weather in 30 minutes. Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom, 97.9 WHAV-FM presents the new Open Mic Show with Bill Masek. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. That is the number. 978-374-1900. If you'd like to call in. If you have a comment or a question for State Senator Barbara Letalian, who's with us, uh, give us a call. And if um, you'd like to um, just make a comment, you can do that, too. Anything you want to say, the lines are always open here on the new open mic. I'm Bill Masick. Barbara is here with me. She has her assistant, or I don't know what your official title is, but Emma's here. <laughs> and uh, so, we, you know, we have a, a good group of people here in the studio right now, and you can weigh in at 978-374-1900. You know, I, I'm going to tell, I tell this story a lot. It was because I was so, like, taken back by it. Um, when I was returning to the city council, uh, the same year that um, mayor Ferentini became mayor from the city council. It was 2003 and two th- beginning of 2004, mm-hmm. actually. And um, right, because John was, Guerin was 2003. That's right. Yeah, that's they right. They overlapped with John and, for a year. And and so I came back after a 12 year absence with family and doing stuff personally. That my oldest son went to college. My youngest son no, my oldest son graduated college. My youngest son went to college. I asked my wife if she minded if I'd throw my hat back in the local political ring, and I did. And I was successful again, so I appreciate all the support I've received over the years, and I love serving, and constituent services, which you mentioned, Mm -hmm. is so important, and I love doing that for people and helping make their life better. So anyway, enough of that. I want to tell you a story that Marty Meehan at the time, he was um, the congressman, congressman, Uh and he was at the inauguration that year, and in the hallway, he told me that he was frustrated because he was trying to get... Uh, some traction for his parody bill. Mm-hmm. And I said, what, what do you mean by that? What do you, what, what would, what's your bill say? He says, I'm having a hard time getting people to sign on to it. He said that what it said was very simple. It was that whatever the United States spent in foreign countries for certain categories, such as road building, schools, um, Infrastructure, you know, uh, you know, sewerage and those kind of services, all the different services. There were, you know, he had had proper slices mm-hmm. that whatever w- they, the U.S. spent in foreign countries that they had to spend at least the same amount or more in our country. Mm-hmm. Washington wouldn't go for it. I'm shocked to this day. Probably still the case. Probably worse. But. Right. Don't you think as we that continue we need to nation build and get involved right. in foreign countries, I don't, imagine it's worse than and that. And that's why yeah. we don't have money to properly do our combined sewer overflow and that we don't have resources and assistance mm-hmm. that I believe we should have a little more in this country. And mm-hmm. I'm not a, I'm not opposed to helping other countries mm-hmm. that are in need and and need our support. But on the other hand, you know there's an old saying charity begins at home. Right, and you got to take care of your own to nurture your own. Otherwise, you won't, you'll you'll be weak and not even be able to to strengthen others. Mm-hmm. So anyway, enough of of that. But yeah. but it was just I mean, a, an interesting I thing agree. he told me, and it was it was real. It wasn't just a concept. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah, I, I share that with you. So hopefully, if you're in Washington, you can maybe try to get your own parody bill going in a sense. Right. Yeah. You <laughs> know, I think one opportunity that we've heard is on the horizon. 
I don't know when this will happen. Maybe this year, maybe in the next session, uh, is the concept of doing an infrastructure bill, right? A national infrastructure bill. Now, I think what most seasoned uh, government officials expected was, you know, a decently sized, well-funded, federally funded infrastructure bill. What's been proposed thus far, and a lot can change obviously, uh, was more that it would be a, a rather modest uh, investment from the federal government expecting that the private sector and that the local and state governments would pitch in. But as you know, our local and state governments are pretty stretched right now. That's right. And so in my mind, if we are going to invest, we might as well invest in infrastructure. But I, I think they'll, you know, they haven't settled on what the final uh, mode will be, but you know, certainly either this year or next, there's talk of an infrastructure bill. And that's when, if you've done your homework and you're a good legislator, you have your list at the ready from each of your communities, what they want, what they need, what the estimated cost is, and what's the priority order, right? So that, so for example, we just did a capital bond bill uh, in the Senate. Yeah. And so my four communities, I knew, I knew how much I was going to be able to basically cover. Uh, and I was able to look at the four communities, their priorities, and make it work so that everybody got something major that they wanted and needed in their community. Um, and so if, it, and that just comes with experience, right? If you've been a legislator, you know to have those things done, to do that homework, to have that lined up. Right. And, you know, there are opportunities to do that along the campaign trail as you're meeting with the different mayors and um, town fathers to get those, you know, get that information from each of your communities. Because honestly, I've always practiced that. If I'm not paying taxes in a given community, I'm not choosing and not weighing in on what they want and need. Right. I will ask and I will fight like hell to get it for them, but I'm not going to tell you what you need in Haverhill. Uh, I'm going to ask you what you need in Haverhill and work with you know a, a coalition of people, but have that ready so that when something like that, an infrastructure bill or, or if there's another funding opportunity comes along, that you are able to take full advantage and have an informed decision and make sure you're right in that game advocating yeah. for your communities. I think we need another lane on 495 because mm. the traffic is so bad. And maybe 93 to look New Hampshire has been widening they have 93 from their border one, yeah. to, to Manchester. Right. And they're finally getting close I think to, mm -hmm. to uh, that project, but um, I think that w with the amount of traffic we have we need to think about maybe widening some of our interstate roadways and also creating public transportation to maybe take down some of the uh, traffic right. because they're riding on either rail or some other form of public transportation. But on yeah. the other hand, I, don't you think that, um, in, you know, you can't keep building skyscraper after skyscraper in Boston that's going to either attract people to either live there or work there and that your roads are going to stay the same, you know, right. as you mentioned uh, off mic, the, you know, the traffic to and from Boston from this area is, you know, an hour and a half to two hours during commuter time. Every day. And commuter yep. time is all the time. It's almost all the time now. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it used to be if you could head in after 9 or 9.30, you could sail into Boston. Yep. That does not exist anymore. It doesn't happen anymore. Uh, I guess perhaps it's because of a combination of a stronger economy, people wanting to get in their cars uh, less than um, – reliable public transportation, quite frankly. And, uh, you know, we talked offline as well that in the paper today was Andy Vargas's idea about more frequent train service coming out to the end of the line, so to Haverhill right. uh, throughout the day. Um, if you're expecting folks to do a reverse commute, um, you really need to have uh, options for folks to be able to take that train at all times of the day, not right. just loaded around the morning and the evening commute. So I fully agree with what he's trying to do. Right. Uh, we thought with the double tracking that there would be uh, opportunities for more trains to run through. Of course, you've also got freight coming through as well. So the double yeah. tracking we thought would help help with uh, more frequent trains. Um, you know, uh, and, and fewer wait times. Um, but I think that until and unless our public trains and infrastructure, public transportation is more reliable, you're going to find more people hopping in their own car or 
um, relying on Uber and Lyft and those kinds of things. Some of the ideas that were floated when I worked for the state treasurer for Steve Grossman, uh, people came in around the idea of making uh, using the the shoulder using the shoulder the breakdown lane yeah uh, which we now do at times on 93 right um but but opening that up at all times um allowing a dedicated bus lane so that buses uh and um much the way you know on the route into boston you pick up uh, somewhere around Charlestown, you pick up the ability if you are two or more two in a car more, yeah. to have a dedicated lane. But running a dedicated lane further out, maybe from the 128 corridor or all the way up and down uh, that road at certain times of the day to encourage carpooling and all of that. Um, there are talks of charging uh, more money to be in lanes that are, are less populated. Um, I don't know how I feel about that, but the thought of paying to get uh, to get somewhere faster has been floated and used in other states. Uh, so there are all sorts of ideas, but um, you know, right now traffic is a big, big uh, hindrance in Absolutely. our area. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When you drive down into Connecticut and you see the rail running. Um, sometimes parallel in between Route 95 or to the side of Route 95, you kind of wish that that had been built in when, yeah. when Route 93 was put in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good thoughts. Yeah. Well, um, it's um, 7.45 right now, and we need to take another pause for the cause, and we'll be right back with uh, State Senator Barbara Latalian with more conversation on her bid for the 3rd Essex representative uh, third congressional third district. congressional yes. district okay. very good i'll get used to it yeah okay <laughs> thank you <Thanks. laughs> all right we'll be right back right here on the new open mic uh, on whav thanks open mic bill masek and the new open mic will be right back get in on the action call 978-374-1900 if you're enjoying this program, consider becoming a WHAV member right now. Just click on the membership tab at whav.net. Are you listening to WHAV on cable television? If so, join WHAV in thanking the board, staff, and members of your local public access channel. Catch the wave! Hi, it's Gary Lapierre. I worked for WHAV. It was brief. Long story, tell you sometime. Anyway, become a WHAV member or renew your membership now. Just visit WHAV.net and click on the membership tab. Catch the wave. WHAV. Open mic. Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom, 97.9 WHAV-FM presents the new Open Mic Show with Bill Masek. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. And we're back on the new Open Mic. I'm Bill Masek, uh, State Senator Barbara Latalian. Uh, running for the third congressional seat, Very currently good. held by Nikki Songus, yes. who's retiring. Yes. And um, there's a you said there's a big field of thirteen people. Thirteen. Give or take. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, right now everyone is engaged in collecting nomination paper sig signatures. Getting signatures. And yeah. Yeah. The requirement is two thousand certified. So you go for roughly twice that amount of signatures. I, I know the feeling, and, but I don't yes, need two thousand locally. Right. Yeah. And so. Perhaps the field will winnow down somewhat with folks that aren't right. able to get that number of signatures. So you might see a winnowing down. They're due, I think, at the beginning of May. Yeah, uh, that's, you a, may that's, see a that. that's a big that's effort. That's a big effort. It's a huge effort. Yeah. And, and there are a couple of people in the race that are, I think, doing this unto themselves. So for them, it might be a real challenge to get those signatures. Yeah. For others, the challenge may be uh, raising money. Right. Um, you know, it's a huge issue, unfortunately, a huge reality in uh, in federal politics now that to be able to run, um, you know, you can't just go around and knock on doors anymore, unfortunately. You can in, in a House seat. You can in a Senate seat with a driver. Uh, this is the equivalent of about five Senate state Senate seats. So um, you need to have the ability to 
buy, for some people it's buying TV, uh, certainly mailers that can go out among all 37 cities and towns, hiring staff, et cetera. So, but that's a huge expense too. It's huge. What? And the price tag, uh, you know, 10 years ago when Marty Meehan retired, people thought, you know, if you can raise a million, you're on easy street with a race. Uh, we have people that are going to spend, uh, you know, one and a half to four million dollars on this race. Wow. Yes. A lot of money. Yeah. yeah. I will not be at the top of that scale. I will be closer to the one and a half. Uh, but that's still a tremendous amount of money. Right. Yeah. Well, whether you like him or not, uh, I think uh, our current president proved that you don't have to be the top spender to be the victor. Correct. So with money, that in mind, money is an ingredient in it. these races, right. but it. it is it is if you spend it wisely, it is uh, do you connect with people? Do people feel you have listened to them? Um, are your values reflective of their values? Uh, you know, there's a whole host of of things that are really important uh, in being a, a candidate. I happen to believe experience is one of those. Um, so, you know, it's also the case that perhaps if you have more experience and you have a base and you've been around and people know you and know your work ethic, then you don't need as much money to promote yourself right. and, and uh, you know, send out relentless ads over TV. So Now, let's just say you've won the seat and you're going to Washington. Mm -hmm. How are you going to feel about the kind of wall that's between the D's and the R's. Can you get together with people and try to find middle ground and and to not give up your ideals or your standards? But right. have you thought about that? I have. You know, when I won the seat uh, that, that Haverhill was included in the House seat in 2003, uh, that was after redistricting, and it was designed for a Republican to win. Uh, and although certainly in Haverhill, I shared the communities, uh, the community with um, Harriet Stanley and Brian Dempsey, who were both Democrats, I also had Senator Bruce Tarr that I shared North Andover, Boxford, and Georgetown with, yeah. uh, and Brad Hill, who I shared Boxford and Georgetown with. And, you know, the issues in those communities uh, had nothing to do with being a Republican or a Democrat. You know, they had concerns around education funding and um, quality you know, local of life. aid, quality, quality of, life, of life. That's and right. Common sense. That's right. Are probably the two most that's key right. ingredients. And so I worked with them on the issues that were, you know, challenging in those communities. And in my mind, interestingly enough, a lot of the special education funding stuff that I fought for, both Bruce and Brad helped tremendously with nice. because right. it affected their communities. And so, and we worked on environmental stuff together, you know, uh, when the salting of route, the Route 95 quarter was um, causing high salt levels in the wells in Boxford right. right along 95. I remember that. We had to jump in and get actively involved in that. Yeah. Um, and so, honestly, if you're a good legislator, you're following what the needs and wants are of your communities. And if you're smart, you're building coalitions with people no matter where they live, no matter what their party. Uh, you know, you want to build bridges with people because the secret to being successful passing legislation, and I've had a lot of success with that, is really building coalitions and well funding. Said. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and that's it's the really key. the way to travel. And, right. and you'll get more done and you'll make people happy and you find that that uh, kind of sweet point, whether it's 50 50, 60 40, 70 30, it doesn't matter, but you get something resolved. That's and you're right. And not, you're not stagnant, you're not stalemated, which it frustrates me that uh, my federal government is really boxed in and won't even do what used to be done. Remember Tip O'Neill used to get together with uh, the Republicans and, and right. have and, a beer and with have them. Have a beer yeah. and, and it was right and and find some commonality. Mm -hmm. There can't be that much difference right. between the two parties that you can't and, and, and maybe not on every issue. Mm -hmm. But I think you got to try and when you just say nope you know, I'm not going over there. You know, I'm not even talking. I think that's wrong. Well, first of all, we're going to have a Republican governor for the next uh, three years. And so it would be foolish not to uh, reach out across the aisle and see how you can work with people and get things done. 
Um, you know, who knows next year whether the House is going to, you know, swing Democratic or right. not. Uh, whether it is or it's not, the fact remains that Republicans will control the Senate and will control the presidency. And in order to get things done, you've got to get things through all three branches. Right. So you really need to take an approach of working in collaboration with other right. people. At, at least on some of the key issues to try and find that commonality. It's great to hear you say that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Great. That's been my experience. Yeah. No, I know. And yeah. I, and I've, A lot you know, of the legislation I've, got... I've been able to pass. So, for example, I have an autistic son was able to pass health insurance coverage. That was a unanimous I vote. I remember that. Yeah. Because when someone's um, affected by autism or some other developmental, intellectual, or physical disability, or if you have a senior with Alzheimer's, you know, those aren't partisan issues. Those right. are issues that affect everybody. You want to help. You want to find a way to partner with people through government to make it easier for them. They're not partisan issues. They're not. And the yeah. way you presented that, I remember, it, it, it's like how could anybody argue with you? How could anybody not support right. what you were presenting? So Right. Well, you do your homework yeah. and you state the facts. And in providing insurance coverage, actually we were helping schools as well as families because if – if those children get what they need in terms of managing their behaviors, their communication, and other needs, they're going to uh, do a whole lot better in the school system, not necessarily need out-of-district placement, um, and fare better over their lifetime and be able to be a more productive person and perhaps be less reliant on public programming. So it just makes good sense it all the way sense. around. It's compassionate and it's cost effective. Yeah. And same with our seniors. Um, you know, I, I happen to um, parent my own mom for the rest of her life w through Alzheimer's at my home. And um, we're now doing an Alzheimer's bill. And I would hope to do something similar down at, at, in Washington because it's, it's a real public health crisis affecting many families. And in my mind, it's not a partisan issue. It's a quality of life it issue. It is. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I lost my mom to Alzheimer's. You so did? I, 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 yeah, just last year. So I, I can relate. I know what you're saying. And It's and a huge issue. There a are huge. probably more things that could be uh, looked at or done. But right. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you for saying that. Sure. Um, I um, I just want to mention that we have a phone line that's open. If anybody has a question for um, Senator Barbara Latalian, State Senator Barbara Latalian, and running for the third congressional district in mm -hmm. Massachusetts of Massachusetts, going to Washington, mm -hmm. currently held by Nikki Songus. Our phone number is nine seven eight three seven four nineteen hundred nine seven eight three seven four one nine hundred, and you can call now. We've got about five minutes left, uh, closing in on four minutes. So uh, we've got to uh, wrap it up in yeah. just a few minutes. Anything you want to say or, you know, give, um, you the, uh, give you the microphone? Yeah, no, I think we've covered a lot. I, I guess I would like to take the opportunity to ask you what you, in your opinion, is the most pressing need right now in Haverhill. What do you think I should know? Whoops. Um, I think the most, there are a few things I, th I think that, that we need to keep our eye on the ball with. One mm -hmm. of them is... Um, gangs, opioids, and education. Mm -hmm. I think those are three of the main things that we need to keep working on, building, adding to, to uh, make sure that Haverhill's quality of life uh, in, in our education for our kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, overall, I think we've, we've uh, come a long way from when we hit hit bottom and we've come back over the last uh, decade plus but I think you know there's always room for improvement mm -hmm. so um, those are the things that I think but but those are also national issues absolutely especially opioid absolutely opioid addiction I, yeah. I don't know how it, you know I don't have the magic wand to wave and say do this or, or let me do this and it's all fixed because it's a problem but I I, I think that there needs to be some refocusing that mm -hmm. what what's being done it's like the, the war on drugs hasn't been won, and it's been a long time. So right. um, we're, uh, you know, we're, it's just a sad, that's a very sad situation that people get hooked. We have a call. Oh, great. Let's go very for the phone good. before we run out of Wonderful. time. Okay. Hello, caller. Yes, uh, Dr. Boucher calling back in. Dr. Boucher. Jerry, thank you for calling back in. Do you have a question for yes, our uh, state Barbara, senator? Yes, uh, I, uh, I think it's uh, profoundly uh, grat uh, congratulations to you for running and doing a good job in the uh, State House. Thank you. Uh, there's a question I just created. Uh, Nikki Songis was always a pro 
veteran, 100 pro veteran. How do you, what's your uh, attitude about that? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I think we've been very fortunate that Nikki served on the Armed Services Committee. Um, you know, I, I'm the daughter of a veteran, a, a Navy World War II vet. Uh, um, actually signed up at age 17 uh, to serve in World War II. Um, I would hope, you know, that we can replicate. Massachusetts has some of the best veterans uh, supports and services uh, of any state in the whole nation. And I would try to continue that legacy of strong service that Nikki has given, uh, but also try to see how we can support our veterans at all stages and ages of life. Every year I do a veterans uh, uh, drive in all of my public schools to provide toiletries for uh, veterans uh, that are being served out of a, um, a shelter uh, and food uh, uh, food um, kitchen, I guess I should say, soup kitchen yeah. uh, in Lawrence. Um, and, you know, I get actively involved in that every year. I get actively involved with my Dracut veterans who do a lot at their DAV. Um, you know, I, I, I respect and admire the veterans and, and would like to come back and work again with the Veterans Outreach Center. I worked with them very closely when I was a rep. Um, and so, absolutely. Yep. All right, All right. Barbara, uh, Bill, before we get cut up. Jerry, we only got less than a half a minute, so I, right. I, I, I kind uh, of I have know. to. I like to campaign for her. Give her my contact. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Jerry, Thank thanks for much. calling in. Wish you'd call a little earlier. We okay, are just pal. about out of time right here on the new open mic. I'm Bill Masick. Thanks for listening. We'll be back again next Monday night right here on WHAV 97.9 FM. Open mic. Thank you. Join Bill Masek live on the new Open Mic again next Monday night at 6. The opinions expressed on the Open Mic show are not necessarily those of 97.9 WHAV-FM, its underwriters, or affiliated stations. The Open Mic show came to you from the Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom. It's 8 o'clock.